hello guys welcome back to my channel now today video is not a, not a technical video i'm trying to make the slide clear yeah something like that but it's a video about why i left india okay is this clear looks blah i'm trying to find the angle to show this properly yeah it's not very clear but you can see i'm coming from uh, this background place this is my where i'm sleeping actually and i said why not i put on some video to let you know what's happening to me i have a lot of audience from india I came to Kenya. Now, why? Just before I go, I have to tell you this is not a technical video. This is about myself. And of course, you'll be asking questions if you don't see me posting. Why? So, I had to leave India. Of course, the government of India served us with the notice to leave India, not only me, everybody who's not from there, who's from Africa or from other parts of the world, who, didn't, who are not having, you know, a good reason to be there. And I was one of those, you know, because I've been stuck there for quite a long time. When I say a long time, I mean years, I'm talking of years. I'm not a... I've been stuck there for for a very long time. Just uh, take it that way. So I had to leave, and they gave something called amnesty for six months, which I was not aware of. So one friend of mine told me about it around August. He told me you don't know that there's an amnesty for you to leave without paying penalty because before that for you to leave if you have been staying in India without I mean documents let me put it that way <laughs> if you want to leave you have to pay penalty and that was a lot of money like one lakh rupees in Indian rupees over time they reduced it to 50,000 which was still a lot of money if you didn't have sources for it for my case for example let me give my case what I was doing there was basically selling stuff. I go pick electronics from the market and sell to the to them, to the very people who are producing this. You know, they know everything about the prices and everything. It's like sympathy. Somebody knows the price of something, but they always you 50 rupees extra. Maybe if it's something very new, it gives you 200 rupees extra. <laughs> You have to move like that the whole day. You come home with two to three hundred rupees to survive. Transport takes a hundred. Food takes a hundred. Now what have you left with a hundred to save that to pay rent? Like where I was staying, I was paying three thousand rupees a month. And this you have to pay on due date. There's no negotiation about it. Otherwise you'll be thrown out. You know, a couple of guys who are living in rickshaws. I mean, they didn't have a place to stay. Or you go to stay in a home shelter where you pay something like 10 rupees a night. There, there are a lot of bad guys around you, you encounter there. So I was not living there myself. So I rented a house. So for me to pay this rent, I had to move every day. It's a long story. Make some little money to come and pay the landlord and eat. So that, that, that was it. I mean, there's no money to save to pay penalties. You know, that's why I got stuck there for a long time, even when I wanted to leave. I really felt like I'm in a hole. That even if I wanted to leave, I can't go. That was very, very, very scary scene for me. I mean, this thing is not giving the right. Hmm. Sometimes I wake up like in a dream and realize, hey, what if I wanted to leave? No, I can't leave. Am I in a hole? Somewhere where you can't leave? So, 
when I heard about this amnesty, I said, I have to go for it. <laughs> I have to go for it, but I didn't have tickets also to come. And uh, I tried to reach to my family <coughs> back home. Said, because I disconnected with them for a very long time, naturally, they lost the bond. I think they were not forthcoming, if I can say so. Except for my younger brother. My brother is a brother, you know. He came on board and tried to help me. Actually, he's the one who tried to help me, who brought me back home. So, I started preparing myself when I saw real possibilities. For example, I went to the embassy with the money that I collect from the sale of these things. And the embassy is not in our embassy, Kenyan embassy in Vajan VR does not support you financially in any way. Instead, we have to buy <laughs> emergency certificate to leave. That is if you can prove beyond reasonable doubt that you are a Kenyan, even to enter through those gates barricaded by security. Fortunately for me, I had an old passport which I kept more than let me just give 15 years. I don't want to put, okay, 20 years. I, be, I was there for more than 20 years. It's a long time, really. So, I had kept that passport, although it was expired, as my trump card. I mean, the last thing to prove that I'm a citizen of Kenya. Otherwise, how do you prove? You can't walk to an embassy and say I'm a Kenyan. You have to prove that you are one. So, so I had this passport. I knew that when time will come, this is the thing that will save me. And it really did save me because I was able to prove to the security in the gate that I'm going to my government. This is my government, this embassy. You see, missions abroad are regarded as government's representatives, right? So I went inside and I was attending to the immigration. The lady was very cooperative with me. And she gave me the necessary assistance I wanted, actually. And I'd gone there prepared. So I had money. I knew they have to take money from me, 1,000 rupees, to get an emergency certificate. I'd done the research before. I knew that. <coughs> and uh, for passport size photos, which I, was, I had with me, yeah, and the old passport, I guess that's all I gave, I don't remember whether there's anything else that I had to give, now the lady ag agreed, I said, well, there was one official, I don't know, maybe it was an immigration, I never asked him, who came along with me and said, okay, he's spoken Swahili, and I told him, this my, uh, what really is, uh, was going on in my life then. That is August, I'm talking about August. Now they told me, okay, you go and do the necessary ABC, and then come back to us, we'll give you the emergency certificate, then you have to go to the police. You know, this is a police who arrest you at no point. I mean, they arrest you if you don't have papers. Now, it was another thing for me to think, how do I go to the police? Hmm? Anyway, I did apply. I told them, I have everything with me right here. Oh, yeah, you do, yes, okay. I paid 1,000 rupees for the, I applied the emergency certificate. I wrote the applications. I gave the passport photo size to them, I think two, if I remember. And everything was done that they needed. I gave proof of my passport, old passport, I left it there. They told me they get in touch with me, so I left. I went back to the house where I was staying. That this I'm talking about August. So after one, two, three days, the lady got in touch with me, called me, come and pick your emergency certificate is ready. So that's how now things were starting to heat up. So I went back and picked the all this going back and forth, I had to support myself. 
it's no money i have to go and sell something and get some money to go because to go to the embassy and back 300 rupees you'll have to spend and i went there three times so i went and picked picked it i think there was something an issue there and then i went back i don't remember i think i went three times is it no no two two times the time when i applied and the time when i went back to take it so i took it and i went back with the merchant certificate now to embark on the next thing now the lady in the secretary of immigration advised me to apply online for exit permit and they told me it's easy to do it and so that gave me that relief that i was not going to meet the police face to face <laughs> you know but it didn't work whenever i tried to apply <laughs> it says that it the wrong address the wrong username wrong password <laughs> i said well i've lived in, in india long long enough i know what's going on here these guys want me to go there physically hmm? and that's what i did after two weeks of contemplation can i really go do i have to i have to go what would happen let it happen but when to start i had to push myself anyway to cut that story short i said let me go let I, whatever happens let it happen i have to leave india before the end of october 30th that was when the amnesty ends and i don't know how long the process will take to complete up to getting the tickets to fly from that country so i went the first time i went i didn't know anything i entered a police place actually it's just police government vehicles and police everywhere <laughs> i was in i was ready for anything so i just went i was told go that's where the arrows of this is Evaru, by the way, means foreign registration officers. They have a lot of power over foreigners. They are the ones who can arrest you, deport you, and do everything. They have that power. It's a government. Um, so I went to the police who are guarding there. They told me, go there, go there, go to the reception. Then I talked to the guys in the reception. There were so many people in there, all even Africans, people, Indians, all that stuff, you know, Europeans who were waiting to, who were there for one reason or another, of course, about either leaving or getting their visas extended. Oh, I, I went there for my own course, so I didn't bother with what anybody was doing there. I went direct to the counter and I told those people, they asked me, what brings you here? Yeah. That question, what brings me here? Well, sounds ominous. And I told her I want to go to my country. Have you applied? No. I asked them, how do I apply? I tried online, it's not working. I said, go outside there. There are some cyber cable guys, they'll help you. <laughs> okay, that's cool. I went outside, just outside that place. And I found some guys, two, three guys there. And the, the, the first thing they asked me, do you have a rent agreement? <laughs> do you know what that means? Are you legally in India? Do you have the, you know, you cannot get a RP uh, without having the a visa. I mean, legality to stay there. And how do you get the rent agreement? How does a landlord let you stay without this thing, you know? So such a difficult situation. I said, no, I don't have one. He said, you have to go back and get the rent agreement. I never had a rent agreement. I had a prosperous relationship with the, my previous landlord and the, the, on, uh, or, what do you call it? In oral, oral agreement to stay, which is actually legally binding in India, but I didn't know at the time. So anyway, I went back. I tried to ask my landlord. Android was not cooperative at all. He was not cooperating at all. He started to avoid me. Then now I started beating about the bush. How do I get a rent agreement? It went on for days, trying to find a way. The local boys around, they don't know anything. They just come to me and tell him, do you have a dark card? <laughs> I'm not an Indian. So 
Hakanava adult card is just for Indians. That's like an ID. I'm not an Indian. I have a passport. They don't know anything about the passport. They're local boys. Okay, I knew it can't work from that angle. So the next thing was to figure out what to do now. Yeah, I have no information. You know, I was living alone in one place. I don't want, okay, Gobalpu, village type life. Nobody's there who can advise you. Then I reached one of my friends who I expected to have some knowledge and he advised me, told me, if you want to get the rent agreement, you have to go to court. Oh, okay. So that's what I did. I had to go to court and they told me go to this court. I went there. Then uh, that's how I got my rent agreement. Uh, and although there were difficulties, logistics, I mean, some difficulties were there. So, for example, the landlord was also supposed to appear there. <laughs> but he was scared. I mean, it was a small boy and the mother was very old. So none of them were willing to go there <laughs> because they also understand their system. So anyway, I struggled with the lawyers there, and the lawyers some were asking for a lot of money, like 2000 I said, if I'm on, I've done my research, I know I don't need that much to get legal agreement, I mean, rent agreement. Let me go to the chamber itself. I met others who told me, oh, ABC, you have to pay 250 rupees for ABC and that stuff. I say that I can manage, and me, my fee, the guys who are like, what do you call them? Yes, they are others out there and they're living. They hang around there and they do that job. So I engaged them. So one guy was, I engaged them. And they did what I told them. So I paid something around 600 and something rupees. And I, the problem was there about signing, but that also was overcome. And I was out with my document, rent agreement. I couldn't explain my happiness. Because that, but it was not the end of the story. I had to get the landlord to sign who was in the, unwilling in the first place. So I was I had to convince them to sign without their signature. Then this rent agreement meant nothing from the court. They told me you have to go to them to sign. You need three witnesses. I had to use my brain. So when I went back, I chilled with one of my helpers, friends. Because she, she helped me a lot uh, to chill. I mean trying to calm down, see how, what am I going to do next to make these people sign this thing. Then, finally, I went with my helper who was Indian to this landlady. <coughs> she was a lady, an elderly lady, and told her, you have to sign this document. You are the landlady. No problem, you didn't bother with anything, but I bothered. I brought it to you. Your signature is required. So, she signed actually. She signed. She called one of our daughter in law because the boy who had run away was not the husband. So she, she, she signed the document on behalf of the husband, and that was good. So I asked for other signatures from just within the son, the other son of the landlord. There he signed for me, and the, ne the nephew signed for me, and there are the three signatures that were required. So I didn't have much money at the time. And I said, hell, I'm not going to delay this thing. Even if it means me walking to that office, I will walk. There are several kilometers, but I'll ask lift and everything. I have to go there. Now, the cyber cable people are demanded 500 rupees to upload my, that's the form for application. So I was well aware of that. They had told me before, and I saved that money for that occasion. So I went back with the transport that I could afford, go through metros and so rickshaws, I got there. Then there were several barrage of questions I had to answer, like when I came to India, what was I doing, what was the passport number, what was the passport, where was it, can you remember anything, what did, hell, man, <laughs> my head burned, trying to remember. It was a long, long time ago. But I get uh, he told me, okay, give some rough idea where you think we arrived, which airport. I said, Bombay. You arrived in Bombay, which date? 1991. That was a long time. <laughs> so, 
university guys. I'm laughing, but it was quite a nerve-wracking experience I had. And I gave all that I could give. And I gave the <laughs> agreement. Since we had amnesty, I think some things they had to forfeit because I saw in the visa they say relaxed, no visa. So the station and stuff, and they had to call you for interviews that came later. So I applauded. I left. It was successful. They applauded it. Then I went back. So when I went back, then I waited. A week later, I had a letter. Uh, actually, they called me because I gave my phone number. He told me you you come to the Evaros office on this day with uh sorry the light has gone off guys i think i'm having problem with the light and uh, uh let let me try to less it a bit i see what it can manage oh come on what am i going to do and i cannot pull up the extension maybe hold on a minute let me see whether I can 